Hello, my name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 69. Day Day 3069, 3000 is to indicate that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 69, we are on page number 263 and we are going to solve problem number 21. Problem number 21 on page number 265, it should say 265, I don't, oh sorry, 263. And it is, it happens to be the very last problem on the page, number 21. We did par part A and B, I believe, day before yesterday, we did part C yesterday on day 368, uh, day 3068 and today we'll do the last two parts, part D and E. Let's take a look at part D. Number 21, part D. We are given a function which looks something like this. f of x we are, we are told, this, which is equal to y we are told, is equal to the square root of x plus 2. And our job is to provide all the information that they're looking for uh, which is the shape of this function, provide the domain, provide the range, even though they don't ask for the range, we're going to give the range and we're going to talk about the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Essentially describe this function as much as you can. Let's begin, shall we? Let's start with something simpler. Let's, let's start with y equal to root of x. If this is the f, if, if, we, if we call it this function f of x, if the name of this relationship is f, if the name of this relationship is f, if we are calling this relationship f, then we're going to have to call this one a different, by a different name. Let's call it g. g is the name of the relationship. You understand? That's what it is. g of x. y equals root of x. When you talk about a root of a number, the domain of this function, the domain. What does domain mean? We talked about it before. What does domain mean? Domain simply means what are, what are, the allowable, allowable values of x. What is x? What is x allowed to be? Well, here, since y is equal to root of x, we cannot take a, we cannot take a, we cannot take a square root of a negative number. It's not possible. We cannot take a square root of a negative number because what does square root mean? Let's talk about something simpler. Square root of 9. What does it mean? When, when somebody asks us, come up, so comes up to us and asks us what's this, what's, how, what is the square root of 9, what is it that they're asking? What they're asking us is, what is that number, what is that number which when multiplied by itself, which when multiplied by itself, you see they're both n, n and n which means it's being multiplied by itself, it gives us 9. And to which there are two answers. There are two numbers. A positive 3 times positive 3. A positive 3 multiplied by itself is going to give us positive 9. Or negative 3 times negative 3 is going to give us positive 9. And therefore square root of 9 is equal to either positive 3 or negative 3. But what happens? But what happens instead of 9 if we have negative 9? That's not possible. This is not possible. Square root of negative 9 is not possible because a number, a number, any number, a number by definition, any number by definition is either going to be positive or negative. If the number is positive, then a positive times positive will always be positive. And if the number happens to be negative, then negative times negative because we're multiplying by itself, again it's going to be positive. It is not possible to multiply a number, any quantity by itself, any real number that is, and get a positive uh, and get a negative 9. Therefore, square root of 9, square root of negative 9 does not exist. Does not exist. No real number exists. And here I shouldn't be so casual. There are something called there are something called imaginary numbers. We won't go there, we don't have to go there, we don't have to worry about them. Imaginary numbers are what uh, engineers are come across. If you study physics, if you study astronomy, uh, you will eventually learn what, what, what imaginary numbers are. But as far as the GRE is concerned, 
real number is the only thing that we deal with. A real number is what I deal with in my in my life. That's what you and I deal with in our daily life, and that's what it is. Real. What's the definition of real number? Do you know how do you know how to define real numbers? Real numbers or real number is anything that appears on the number line. There's a zero, there's positive one, there's negative one, there's point one, there's a quarter, there's negative fifteen, there is there is positive to twenty thousand. Anything that appears anything that appears on the number line is a real number. And if it and if it doesn't appear on the real line a number line, it's not a real number. It's what is known as imaginary number. We won't worry about it. So we cannot take a square root. We cannot take a square root of a negative number. No real number exists. There is no answer here. It, we cannot take a square root. We cannot take a square root. So well, let's first let's first answer this question. What's the domain of this function? What are the allowable values of x? What is x allowed to be? Here, here, the answer to this question is x can be x can be anything as long as as long as it is not it is not negative it is not negative x can be anything as long as it is not negative but how do we write it in the, in, 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 the, in the language of mathematics if you open up a math textbook this is not how it's going to be written this is how you're going to see in the math textbook it's going to say domain domain here is going to be all real numbers all real numbers such that such that x is either greater than or equal to zero. There we go. It has to be either a positive value or zero, of course, but it cannot be negative. Now let's talk about what we have actually on our hand. We're going to leave this here and let's talk about let's talk about what we have here, which is the f of x right here. This quantity, x plus 2 that we see, this quantity under the root sign, under the square root sign, cannot be negative, cannot be negative. This quantity cannot be negative. In other words, this quantity that we see under the root sign x plus 2 has to be greater than 0 or equal to 0. It has to be positive or, or equal to 0. If we solve it, watch what happens. And since I need the room, I'm going to erase this part. But that's what, we are going, that's what we are answering. What are the allowable values of x? What is x allowed to be? We are about to answer that. We are about to answer that. If we solve this thing, subtract 2 from both sides. And it turns out that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2 x cannot be anything less than negative 2. For example, if you have a square root of x plus 2, x cannot be negative 3 because negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 1 and that we cannot do. We cannot take a square root of a negative number. x can be negative 2 if you like. That's perfectly fine. If x is negative 2, negative 2 and positive 2 is going to be 0 and square root of 0 is 0, which is perfectly fine. x can be positive, of course, and it will be fine. x can be positive. For example, x, x, can, be, x can be 3 and 3 plus 2, we can take a square root of 5. That's a real number. Square root of 5 uh, is about two, approximately 2.2, .2, but it is, it, is, it is something that is real. We can, it's there. It, we, cannot know the, we do not know the exact value of it because it's an irrational number, but we know it's approximately 2.2. .2. It exists somewhere here on the number line. If this is 0, and this is, this is 1, if this is half, this is quarter, then, oh, actually 2.2, .2, sorry. The square root of 5 is 2.2. .2. The square root of 5 is 2.2, .2, but it does exist here. 0, 1, 2, right here somewhere is going to, oh, sorry, right here somewhere, 2.2 2 .2 approximately is root 5. It exists, on a, it exists on a number line. That we can do. So what is, the, what is the domain of this function? What's the domain of this function? The answer is, domain of this function is that, domain all real numbers such that x is, so I hope you can still read it. Domain of this function is all real numbers such that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. There we go. That's all. Let's plot it. Let's talk, let's, let's, let's now, let's, let's plot it, see what the shape of this graph is. So one more time, this is how we write it. Domain of this function, the 
this is how we write it domain is all real numbers such that and such that we write like this such that x is greater than or equal to negative 2 this is this is read that such that such that x is greater than or equal to negative 2 let's plot it shall we there is our x values there are our y values and we know it has to be neg it has to be equal to negative 2 or something more than that it cannot be negative 3 so let's start with negative 2 negative 2 negative 1 1 2 3 and see what happens okay then this is the this is the relationship we're using square root of x plus 2 okay stay with me in the story x plus 2 when x is negative 2 negative 2 and positive 2 is going to be 0 and square root of 0 is 0 when x is negative 1 negative 1 plus a positive 2 is 1 and square root of, square root of 1 is just 1 when x is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, it's going to be square root of 3. And square root of 3 is approximately 1.7. When x is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. When x is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, and square root of 5 is square root of 5 is approximately 2.2. Square root of 5 is approximately 2.2. And one more time, even though I have talked about it many, many times, I'm going to remind you one more time. If you do not know what I'm talking about here, when we talk about square root of 2 and square root of 3 and square root of 5, the approximate, approximate value of these three quantities, square root of 2, square root of 3, and square root of 5, and all the other square, uh, you, you must know the squares by heart, 1 through 20. And if you do not know uh, these, the, these quantities, these values, I would like you to watch this video. T is, T is day 2 and day 3. Type in T is math. T is, T is, is a name for an exam. It stands for test of essential academic skill. Test of essential academic skill. It's one of the tests that I uh, tutor student, uh, people in. Uh, they come to me uh, just like you are looking at here for GRE. I know, I know we are not here for T's. But uh, one of the exams that uh, people have to take to get in a nursing school is called T's. And for that they come to me for help if they are if not happy with their scores. And there is a series of videos on the topic, on T's. So just like you would search for GRE Math Day 47 or, or Day 3047, just type in T's Math Day 2 or Day 3 and watch both of those videos and you, and you will know what I'm talking about. So, let's plot this, shall we? Watch what happens. When X is negative 2, When x is negative 2, x is 0, or y is 0 rather. When x is negative 1, y is 1. 1, 2, 3, this is going to be 2 and a half, 2 and a quarter. I remember 2.2 is going to be somewhere here, which we're going to need in a second. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 2 and a half, 2 and a quarter. 2.2 is somewhere here. We'll get to that in a second. When x is 1, when x is 1, so we did, so when x, x is negative 1, y is 1, right here. When x is 1, is square root of 3, which is about 1.7. When x is 1, is 1.7, this is 1, this is 2, this is 1.5, so 1.7, let's say, is here. And when x is 2, it's exactly 2. And when x is 3, is 2.2. What do you notice? What we notice is that it's a parabola. It's a parabola. You should not be so surprised to see that it's a parabola because it's a parabola except the bottom half doesn't exist. We are used to seeing a parabola like this. In a parabola that sits like this, listen carefully, a parabola that sits like this, the, the equation of this one is y is equal to x squared. But if you reverse the role, if you if you reverse the role and we write it as x is equal to x is equal to y squared, and you solve the equation for y, we get y is equal to root x. And that's what this is. This parabola that we just plotted here is the mirror image of that parabola, except instead of sitting along y-axis, it sits along x-axis. And because how do we how do we know it sits along x-axis? Because we just reverse the role. It 
original parabola, this parabola that you see, standard parabola, sitting at the origin, sitting at the origin, the, the equation is y is equal to x squared. We switch the rule of x and the y. So in place of y, we put down x, and in place of x, we put down y. And then we solve this equation for y, we get y is equal to root x. And y is equal to root x, if you were to plot that parabola, it will be the same as this one, except this one is shifted two units, as you can see, it's shifted two units to the right because of the plus two. Here, y is zero when x is negative two. In the original one, y is going to be zero when x is zero. Here, in this parabola, y is going to be zero when x is zero, right here. It's going to be the same thing, it's going to be the same thing, I'm going to do it freehand, it's going to look something like this. It's just shifted, it's shifted two units to the left, because we have a x plus two. Do you understand? Um, I think we're taking too much time here. And that's about it. It's the same parabola, but it's shifted two units to the to the right. What about what about its range? We have the domain. What about the range? As you can see, there are no negative values for y. Y does not take negative values. So how do we how do we express that idea? This is how we write it. The range here are all, listen very carefully, all non-negative real numbers. It's a very awkward, it's a very awkward, awkward language, so try to understand it. Since we need the room, I'm going to raise this top part here that we don't need anymore. What do you mean by non-negative, non-negative real number? What does non-negative mean? Non-negative means that we're including zero. Why don't we simply say all, all positive real numbers? Because that's what it is. Why is all positive, isn't it? Why can't we simply say range? Is, range means what are the possible values of y? The answer is y can be anything it wants to be as long as it's positive. Here as you can see, y can be anything it wants to be as long as it's positive. But that's not a complete answer. Because y is also allowed to be zero. And zero is neither positive nor negative. So if you were to say that y can be, any, y can be anything as long as it's positive, then you're going to have to go, go on and add another thing. Also, you're going to have to say why, is, why can be anything that it wants to be as long as it's positive, and why can also be zero. It's sort of saying in that manner, in such a verbose manner, the way we speak is like this. All non-negative real numbers. Non-negative real number means, non-negative real number means zero and all positive numbers. Zero and all the positive values. Zero and all the positive numbers are called non-negative real numbers. They are all real numbers and they are non-negative. Non-negative means you're including zero. That's their way of saying that don't forget the zero. That's all. You're done with this thing. I think we've done enough of it. Let's move on to the next problem. 21E. 21E. 21E is also a bit tricky. I want to read one more time the problem, make sure that we didn't leave out in the part we just erased. It says give the domain which we did, describe the, describe the graph which we did. We described it by saying that it's half a parabola sitting along y-axis, which means the negative values of y do not exist. Negative values of y do not exist because we're taking square root of it and we cannot take a square root of a negative number. It will never, y will never be negative. Including its shape and its x and y intercept. Well, x intercept, let's plot it again. Let's plot it again. It was sitting at negative 2 and it looks something like this. What is this x intercept? Well, x intercept is right here, negative 2. x intercept was negative. Let's go back and finish it up. We never did it. This x intercept, this x intercept is is its vertex. x intercept is 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 its vertex. Vertex of this parabola, that is, the bottom half does not exist. The vertex of the parabola, that's the x-intercept, which is negative 2. The vertex is negative 2, 0. What is this y-intercept? y-intercept is right here. y-intercept is 0. The coordinates of this, this, where, this point is going to be 0 and negative 2. Because the relationship was y is equal to the square root of x plus 2. And when x is 0, when x is 0, when x is 0, we get square root of 2. 
That's what y-intercept means. Y-intercept means where does it cut the y-axis? Well, it cuts the y-axis when x is equal to 0. And that happens when y takes the value of root 2. Now we are done with it. Let's move on to the next one. Part E. Here we are given a function which looks something like this. f of x we are told is equal to x plus absolute value of x. x plus absolute value of x. And because we are dealing with absolute value, we can have to deal with two different scenarios separately. We can have to ask ourselves what happens when x happens to be positive and what happens when x happens to be negative. Because that's why we have absolute values. Because if you're talking about absolute value of x, when x is positive 5, then it's just positive 5. But when x happens to be negative 5, well, it is still positive 5. That's where the complication comes in. So here you have to deal with two scenarios. When x is two, two, two complication, two scenarios. When x is positive, when x is positive, or when x is greater than or equal to 0. Now again, strictly speaking, I shouldn't have said positive. The way mathematicians speak is when x is non-negative, non-negative, uh, because you see, we're including 0 in it. By saying non-negative, we include a 0 in it. And when x is negative, when x is negative, when x is less than 0. So let's, let's take a look at it. f of x, we are told, is equal to x plus root of x. Let's put in numbers. Some, let, let's put in some numbers, if you like, and see what happens. Let's put in some positive numbers. Let's put in f of 5, just to see what happens. f of 5 would be 5 plus absolute value of 5. Watch what happens. 5 plus absolute value of 5 is 2 times 5, isn't it? Therefore, f of x, when x is positive, when x is positive, this thing boils down to 2 times x. It is when x is negative that we have to pay attention here. If x is negative, then f of x, watch what happens. We have x plus absolute value of x. And again, let's put in some numbers so we can see it. What happens if x happens to be negative 7? See, less than 0. If x happens to be negative 7, then we're going to get negative 7 plus absolute value of negative 7. Don't get confused between this parenthesis that I just put in, just to, just to see that it is negative, and this absolute value sign that, I, that we have. Those are two different things. So, negative 7 is just negative 7, but what's the absolute value of, what's the absolute value of negative 7? The absolute value of negative 7 is also positive 7. Absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7, is what I meant to say. One more time, when x happens to be less than 0, let's say x is equal to negative 7, then x plus absolute value of x gives us x is negative 7 right here. And absolute value of x, if x happens to be negative 7, absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7. What happens? They kill each other. Negative 7 and positive 7, they kill each other. Turns out that when x is less than 0, the value of the function is just 0. For all negative value of x, y equals 0. For all, for all negative value of x. Let's plot it, shall we? Let's plot it and see what it looks like. I left no room, no room for it, no room for myself at all. We're going to do it up here. So, let's, let's take care of the negative part first. Okay, I'm just going to do a few of them here. When x is negative 1, which when x is negative 1, absolute value of negative 1 is going to be positive 1. When f is negative 1, negative 1, x is negative 1, and absolute value of negative 1 is going to be also positive 1. So here we have negative 1 and positive 1 is 0. When x, when x is negative 2, negative 2 plus the absolute value of negative 2, which is a positive 2, is 0. So when x is, when x is negative 1, y is 0. When x is negative 2, y is 0. When x is negative 3, y is 0. It doesn't matter what, what value x takes, y is always 0 if x is negative when x is negative. So that's the first portion here. That's the first piece. It is also, by the way, called 
piecewise function because it has two pieces. Not because it has two pieces, but because it has more than one piece. It can have three or four or five pieces or five thousand pieces if you like. It is called a piecewise function. That's the first piece. Let's look at it. So that was this piece right here. Here, if x is if x is greater than or equal to zero, well, when x is equal to zero, y is zero right there. What happens when x is one? When x is one, one plus absolute value of one is going to be two. When x is two, two plus absolute value of two is going to be four. When x is five, five plus absolute value of five is going to be ten. It's two times the amount. So here we go. One, two, three, four, and here we go. Two, four. Since we are running out of room, I'm going to put down as two, four, six, two, four, six. When x is one, y is two. When x is two, y is four. When x is three, y is going to be six. I'm going to get a line like that with a slope of two. Every time, slope equals positive two. Why positive 2? Because every time x goes up by 1 unit, y goes up by 2 units. When x goes from 0 to 1, y goes from 0 to 2. When x goes from 0, 0 to 2, it increases of 2 units, y goes from 0 to 4. Every time x goes up by 1 unit, y goes up by 2 units. How do we write this function? Let's erase all of these things so that we can write this function. How do we write this function? How do we, how do we present the idea of this graph? In the form of a function. So here's what was given to us y is equal to f of x we are told which is equal to x plus absolute value of x and what we found is that what we found is that f of x f of x is equal to 2x we just found if if x is greater than or equal to 0 that's the first part right here f of x equal to 2x right here if x is positive and f of x happens to be equal to 0 if x is negative, x is less than 0. You can write it like this, or in the mathematics textbook, in the math textbook, you'll see something like this. Instead of writing it two separate times, we put them together. This is what it says. Watch here. Is it f of x is equal to 2x or 0. And then we put on, on just one, one process like this and here we have to tell the condition when f of x is equal to 2x such that x is greater than or equal to 0 and f of x is equal to 0 such that x is less than 0 and as I said this is called piecewise function and these two things that you see there are one and the same this thing right here you can write it like this, which is sort of a babyish way, or in the mathematical text, in math textbook, you'll see it like this. It's the same thing. It has two pieces, and it is called, as we said, piecewise function. Let's talk about its x-intercept and then y-intercept. What are the x intercepts What is the x-intercept? Where does this graph cut x-axis? Well, it cuts the graph x-axis here and here and here and here. It has infinite number of x infinite number of x x-intercept. It has infinite number of x-intercept. This function has this function has, and this is how we abbreviate function f n for function. This function has infinite. numbers of x-intercepts. How many of them? Infinite numbers. All the negative values and zero. Infinite numbers. We can count them. X-intercept simply means where does it cut the x-axis? This is the x-axis. Where does this where does this graph touch the x-axis? Where does it cut the x-axis? Well, it is sitting right here. All of these are x-intercepts. What is this y-intercept? Where does it cut the y-axis? Well, there's the y-axis, and it cuts the y-axis only at one point, right here, when, y is, when x is equal to 0. The y-intercept, there's only one. There is only one. When x is equal to 0. That's his, that's his y-intercept. 
y-intercept happens to be at the origin, 0, 0, when x is 0. x-intercept, there are infinite number of them. What is this domain? What is this domain? Are there any limitation on x? That has, and are there any limitation of values that x cannot take? The answer is no. So if we need the room, I'm going to raise the slope part. It has no limit. There are no limitations on as to what values x can take. x can take any value it wants to be as long as it's a real number. Do you understand? So the domain is set of set of all real numbers. Set of all real numbers. What about the range? What about this range? Well, what are the values of y? What are some values that y cannot take? Can you tell by looking at this graph? There are some values of y that do not exist. So if you, as you look at the graph, what values of y do not exist? Well, you should know no negative values for y. y is either 0 or some positive value. You see that? It has no negative value. That's what we mean by domain and range. Domain means what values x is allowed to take. Answer here is x can be whatever the hell it wants to be as long as it's a real number. I'm going to stop saying as long as it's a real number. We're going to, we're going to assume that they are, we're talking about real numbers. As I said, real numbers are the only thing that you have to worry about in the GRA. Okay? What are some limitations on y? What are some values that y is not allowed to take here? Well, we can clearly see here y cannot be negative. y has to be either 0 or some positive value. So let's make a note of it here. The range here, which is saying, which is same as saying, what are some limitations on values of y, what values that y can assume? Well, the answer to that question is, it's a set of all real numbers. Range is also set of all real numbers, provided, provided that x is or rather y, provided that y is positive or zero, provided y is greater than or equal to zero. It cannot be negative. That's the range. The range is set of all real numbers as long as y is zero, as long as y is zero or positive. Right here. Set of all real numbers, provided that x provided that x is greater than or equal to zero. That's the range. Do you understand? That is the range of it. Now here I put down the word such that, here I put down provided, sometimes we use the expression such that, range instead of all real numbers such that y is greater than or equal to zero. Or sometimes we don't put the word provided, we don't put down the word such that, what you will see here is a semicolon after this and then it will continue this part. And it is read as I said before, this thing is read as such that or provided, that's the condition. That's all. That's all there was in problem number 21, part D and part E. Those were nasty, but they had to be done. But the good news is that as we turn the pages, we come across some geometry, and the next set of problems that you see are the ones that you're going to find on page number 280, and two number 280 is where we're going to pick up from in the next video, and those are going to be not so nasty on the, in the next video, as I said, on day number 3070. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.